What's going on family? Robert here. So we've been in this series from the, coming from the topic Approaching Reconciliation from Genesis 33, looking at the story of Jacob and Esau. And so as we've looked at this story, we've seen some things that we need to do as the believer to approach reconciliation. We first must approach it boldly, taking the lead. We also must, most, must approach it humbly, humbly like a servant. We must approach it expectantly, expecting God to do the very best for the situation, both in their lives and ours. And we also must approach it selflessly, looking not only for our interests, but for the interests of the other person and the relationship. But I want to tell you why we do all these things, why we should seek reconciliation, why we should do these things. And I believe it says it very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, which reads like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. This is all from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's stop there. So this text is telling us that, that in Christ we are new. We are different. We are changed. And Christ has reconciled us back to God. He has restored the relationship. Just as Esau and Jacob's relationship was broken, Jesus restored our relationship back to God. And he initiated the ministry of reconciliation for us. So if I can say it a different way, Jesus approached reconciliation for us. We can see that he approached it boldly by leaving heaven and coming down. First Timothy says that he came to save sinners. Jesus approached reconciliation boldly, taking the first step. Jesus not only approached it boldly, but he also approached it as a servant. Mark says that he, he, the Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. He approached reconciliation with us humbly. But he not only approached it humbly, we also see that as he was hanging on the cross— the, the final words that he said from that spot was, it is finished, to telestai, paid in full. He was making a declaration and expecting God to accept his sacrifice. He approached reconciliation with us, not only boldly, not only humbly, but he approached it expectantly, expecting the best outcome, that we would be reconciled to God. He did all three of those things, but we also see that as he was in the garden, he prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. He, he approached reconciliation again, selflessly, looking out what is in the best interest for us and our relationship for God. So I want to encourage you today, if there is somebody who you have a beef with, if there's someone you have a disagreement with, if there is someone that you are just not seeing eye to eye with, seek restoration. Seek restoration because, yes, we do it boldly. Yes, we do it humbly. Yes, we do it expectantly. And yes, we do it selfly. But most importantly, we do it because that's what Jesus did for us. We look to Jesus as our model for reconciliation. We look to the cross as to why we need to be reconciled. We look to all that Jesus did in reconciling us, and it should cause us to want to reconcile and make peace with others. So I want to encourage you with and leave you with those words as we complete this series, Approaching Reconciliation. So with that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Jesus. And I thank you so much for him boldly, humbly, expectedly, and selflessly approaching reconciliation for us. Help that to motivate us to approach reconciliation with others. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, the honor, and the worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So thank you for studying with me. Come back for more daily devotionals. God bless.